when I was on the street preaching, I saw every opportunity as an opportunity to take hold of somebody's mind and to sow seeds of love and, and, uh, um, and change, change to politics even sometimes. And uh, then shortly after that, I was called up to do the military, to, to, to go to a camp. And then I, at that time, I had uh, embraced uh, on the street people of various nationalities, color, and persuasion. And uh, when I arrived at that camp, I, I experienced in my own inner being a resistance to the military drive. So what you've done is you've, uh, taken, you've taken a flag that you found in the school, you told me. Yes, Parktown Boys. Uh, I taught there for a few years. And when was this? 1976. I found this flag uh, in a box. And then I took it to the headmaster because I was scared now I would be doing something. But, and he talked to me, he said the, the flag belonged to some old military outfit. It was a British outfit. From the, and it existed from the time of the Boer War. But for me, what it represents was, uh, I found it at a school. And there were children at that school. So I thought I should see what happened to the children when that flag started flying. Just to the south of the center of the town, you'll find 2,000 graves. Uh, two of these blocks represent those 2,000 graves. Now, my grandmother was 11 years old when they had that concentration camp during the Boer War. And the fact that you are speaking to me means that my grandmother hasn't got a pin representing her on my flag. She, she was alive at the end of the war. She gave birth to a few children, and she died at an old age. But she missed death by a hair's breadth, because 2,000 out of almost 3,000 children died. And needlessly, they didn't have to die. They didn't have to be forced into the, this high felt winter cold is a killer, it's absolutely murder. Mm. The church is apologizing for all that, and then it is a symbol. They apologize for everything.